Mount St. Helens, and Yellowstone supervolcano. Most dangerous volcanoes in the world have been mapped. Emily Hayden of Express UK reports this. Mount St. Helens and Yellowstone on the west coast. Mount St. Helens, Yellowstone, a hot spot, are some of the world's most talked about volcanoes and would put the lives of millions of people in great danger if they were to erupt. And now here are the world's most dangerous volcanoes mapped. More than 278,000 people have lost their lives in volcanic eruptions since the 1600s, with five eruptions causing 58% of the recorded fatalities, according to the Global Volcano Model Network. When assessing which volcanoes are the most dangerous in the world, several factors have to come into play. And these include population density around the areas, the regions of these volcanoes, eruption histories, and the types of magma during these eruptions. The most affected regions where volcanic eruptions can be deadly include the U.S., Indonesia, the Philippines, and parts of South America and Europe. The infamous Yellowstone supervolcano will not be on the list as it last erupted 664,000 years ago, but it's worth mentioning that if an eruption did occur, it would be thousands of times more powerful than a regular volcano and could result in changes felt worldwide. Scientists still consider it worth monitoring constantly, of course. There's even the Yellowstone uh, Volcano Observatory there. Three eruptions at Yellowstone appear to have occurred in the past two million years, 600,000 to 700,000 year cycle starting 2.1 million years ago, meaning it's overdue for our, an eruption. Some of the world's most dangerous volcanoes in no particular order, Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is the youngest and most active of the Cascade volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest. And we see that in the past month, it's had about 30 quakes, according to the Pacific uh, Northwest monitoring stations there. Mount St. Helens is southwestern Washington, probably the most famous U.S. volcano outside of Kilauea, and began forming about just about 40,000 years ago, so it's pretty young, along with the others in the range based on the subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate. In 1647, this volcano went quiet for the next 150 years, but in 1800 it began another eruptive cycle, and that one lasted 57 years. And yet again, it went quiet. In 1980, it roared violently back to life again, and although Mount St. Helens remains quiet for now, it is still active. And the latest thing is that it's, it's also swelling and the mountain is rising by 500 meters. Now, Mount Vesuvius is in Italy, with 6 million people living around the area of the volcano. In 79 AD, Vesuvius buried the city of Pompeii, and over the last 17,000 years, this volcano has gone through eight major explosive eruptions that were followed by large pyroclastic flows. According to the Smithsonian Institute and USGS Global Volcanic Program Database, Vesuvius' last known eruption occurred in 1944, but is still closely monitored, and the Italian government has multiple plans preparing for a possible eruption. And you have Mount Agung. It's in Indonesia, in a region with a population of about 4 million people. The volcano is continuously erupting, and had its last major eruption in 1963, which was one of the most devastating eruptions in that country's history. The 1963 eruption lasted for 11 months, and it produced dangerous ash fall and pyroclastic flows that led to more than 1,000 deaths. The ash plumes above the volcano have been continuously observed throughout 2018 following an eruption in November 2017. And other dangerous volcanoes, Mount Rainier in the United States, Novarupta Volcano in Alaska, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, Mount Fiji in Japan, Mount Merapi in Indonesia. 
Now, Mount St. Helens. There's a video of uh, the uh, rising and the swelling of the dome. This has to do with what happened prior to the 1980 eruption. It's a USGS video. Sebastian Kettler reports, Mount St. Helens Volcano Dome was caught swelling in size, considerably growing by 1,640 feet, that's 500 meters in growth and deformation and rising. A shocking U.S. Geological Survey time-lapse video reveals. It's amazing. This was, of course, prior to the eruption. Mount St. Helens last showed a period of intensive activity between the years 2004 and 2008, when a new lava dome appeared and the period of activity was not a devast as devastating as 2080 volcanic eruption, but the plumes of lava and steam were seen at the surface. And it was terrifying that the volcanic unrest was responsible for the growth of a massive dome around Mount St. Helens Peak. The volcanic dome grew uninterrupted between late September 2004 and 2008 due to scorching magma that was pushing up towards the surface. An unearthed USGS time-lapse reveals the rapid changes afoot and the volcano during that period. According to the USGS, the first 10 months of 2004 to 2008 eruption created a succession of lava spines. Lava spines typically appear when magma escapes a lava dome or vent and as it's cool enough to maintain its shape. These bizarre volcanic formations look like jagged and dark rock slicking, sticking up uh, towards the sky, like black fangs or claws. Now, as the USGS said, the rapid onset of unrest at Mount St. Helens, September 23, 2004, initiated an uninterrupted lava dome building eruption that continued until 2008. The initial phase produced rapid growth of a lava dome as magma pushed upwards. As shown in the video, an initial succession of lava spines, two recumbent and one steeply sloping, grew to nearly 500 meters in length before disintegrating into mounds of rubble. The trajectory of lava extrusion was affected by the geometry of the crater, particularly the proximity of the vent to the south crater wall, and by growing volume of erupted material. And that's when we look at the Pacific Northwest monitors and the map there, we see that that's where most of the uh, earthquakes are occurring, on the southern flank of the volcano. Now, the trajectory of lava extrusion was affected by the genre of the crater, particularly the proximity of the vent of the southern crater wall growing volume of erupted material. In the incredible USGS time lapse, we'll see it later down here in the video here, a dome can be seen pushing upwards in a roughly pyramid like or triangular shape, and it looks unreal, really, to think that this is coming out of the ground. Around October 2006, the dome appears to collapse with rubble falling off to the volcano's sides. Mount St. Helens is believed to have formed during a period of eruptions some 275,000 years ago. The modern features of the volcano were created roughly 3,000 years ago when the volcano underwent a period of frequent eruptions. According to USGS, there are historic records of this volcano erupting in the 19th century which were witnessed by the early American settlers. USGS said since its 1980 eruption, the summit elevation, of course, has decreased. A survey in 1982 gave a measurement of 2,549.7 meters, that's 8,365 feet. But the LIDAR survey done, done in 2009 found the maximum elevation to be uh, about 35 feet less. 8,330 feet. The difference in elevation is likely due to the erosion and the loss of rock, the rim rock, by crater wall collapses. Now, why did Mount St. Helens erupt in 1980? The huge monstrous volcano eruption which tore through the volcano in 1980 was caused by the intrusion of magma into the volcano edifice. 
By the time of spring 1980, a magnitude 5 earthquake struck, which received the volcano's built-up pressure, relieved the pressure, uh, also allowing the water in the volcanic system to abruptly turn into steam and expand explosively. USGS said this abrupt pressure release allowed hot water in the system to flash to steam, which expanded explosively, initiating a hydrothermal blast directly lateral through the landslide scar. Because the upper portion of the volcano was removed, the pressure decreased on the system of magma beneath the volcano. A wave of decreasing pressure down uh, the volcano conduit to the subsurface magma reservoir, which then began to rise, form bubbles and erupt explosively, driving a nine-hour long Plinian eruption. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.